fun. I know we're all tired, we're brain dead, lots of information happening this week. So I'll try not to keep you for too long, but uh, we uh, have a session here on single sign-on. It was a lot of pain for a lot of customers, and uh, I'm hoping, you know, I personally have been involved with the development on the 5.5 side, and I want to share some of that with you. I do want to show you sort of the best ways to use it, some, some gotchas, yes, it is software, and I'm, anyone that's heard me talk before knows I'm very candid and will tell you the truth. Um, I do want to apologize to those that have been following me through the various sessions. It's very hard to do a deep dive or cover the content that co is part of, of uh, vCenter these days into a 40 minute, 45 minute session and then take Q&A. It's very difficult, so there are some sections that will overlap from the deep dive, from the upgrade, uh, from the performance side. So I, first up, I want to apologize for that. But there is a couple of uh, unique content in this, this presentation. So there is still something, if you were in those other sessions, you will still get some value out of, out of staying for this session. But I also know it's the end of the, uh, the last one of the show. So I'm basically killing the VMworld Europe this year. But uh, um, I know buses and, and things like that will be ready after here. But uh, for you, those that don't know, my name is Justin King. Obviously, I'm with VMware. I work for technical marketing. What does that really mean? It's kind of, well, are you technical or are you marketing? You know, you, you, you know how it works or are you trying to spin it for me? You know? So what it really comes back down to is I myself have been a consultant. I've been in pre-sales. I've gone, I used to be a customer myself. So I have, I've, I've gone through all of the roles that you guys are in today. And when I come to technical marketing at VMware, I am responsible for my area of expertise, which is obviously vCenter, to deliver the uh, enablement of new features, new technologies, things like that. So I was here last year introducing you to single sign-on for 5.1, which you all thought, oh, this is great. I can't wait to get this in my lab. And then I ran as fast as I could. <laughs> I do have two colleagues working with me today. These, these are my peers. When I was uh, helping you guys with 5.1, uh, they were both located uh, in our support services. And when I couldn't answer a question, one of these two would. But I have Josh Gray over here. He's going to help answer some questions. He's got a microphone to bounce around. And I have Jonathan McDonald here. And so when I couldn't answer them, these guys really helped me out. And we kind of really bonded together. Unfortunately, in the last six months, they were taken into a new role where they do kind of more of our SE enablement uh, uh, with, with uh, internal uh, training and things like that. So they've not been actively involved with the 5.5 release, which I'll be honest with you, was done last minute. We actually did some changes to the 5.1 code base. And then uh, I actually went to a couple of customers to test it out, try it out, things like that. And then as I'm flying back, hey, we're doing a rip and replace. We've got this new architecture. It's, it's on the fast track for an, an, a future release, but we're going to switch it now. We're going to make the change. And we need you to spend the next two months flying on a plane, going from customer to customer of all sizes, all complexities in their environment to make sure this works. So I have done a lot of testing with this environment. And I want to be able to share with you some of my findings. I want to be able to give you a comfort zone that this is not another 5.1 release. Okay, I want you to have the comfort zone that, hey, it really sounds like we, we, you know, they heard us shout. And we've responded correctly with that. Okay. So we did this session in San Francisco, and we covered half the session on 5.1. But we don't want to deal with that anymore, so I've cut that whole section out. I don't want to uh, imply if you're on 5.1, do whatever you can to get off of it. If you're on update 1B, you know, we are in a, a relatively stable uh, environment now. We're not having uh, all the issues, which were typically based around install, uh, or lack of guidance, things like that. And so I've, I've removed that. I can answer questions. We can, we can take those, uh, those discussions. Uh, but I've, I've moved this to now that we're three weeks into GA. We've, we've got the, you know, the code available. You, you guys have probably already used it. Who, who today has, has got 5.5 running in a lab or in production? What about in production first? One, one, two. Uh, 5.1, um, I would uh, presume majority. Who's on uh, 4x, a 4.0 or 4.1? Customer here, one, two, five, oh. So this is going to be this is going to be valuable for everyone, but I'm going to have a little extra for you guys on on the on the the four x and five o environment. Anyone on two five? Don't believe you, I've had people come up to me this week and say they're on two five. So they're still out there. 
So let's, let's see what we, we've, uh, we've come up with. We've, uh, this is the old slide deck. I'm going to have to change this. This is not the, uh, the slide deck that we had. I apologize, everyone. We're going to fix this right now. See if I can find it. Where's I got no mouse. This is uh, this was changed. Um, they were told about this session to upload it. Yeah, it's, it's all been done. I just did the session in another room. I don't have it on a USB key. Okay. okay. It's it's not on the the one that we did today. The changes I made with the video and everything. You don't have that, do you? No. So. Please bear with us. We're we're, we're getting the correct deck. We will uh, um, move on on the, on the first section, and then we'll hopefully uh, switch over. So this is the first time this has ever happened to me. Let's go back to here. And I don't have a, a mouse. Anyone know what the shortcut is to bring up presenter mode? F5? Shift F5? Let's go back to here. Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, so what I wanted to do is I want to um, ignore this. We're basically going to ignore the top half and we're going to go into uh, the challenges learned with 5.1, just make sure we were on track and then go into the single sign-on and there's more to come um, in the new deck which we'll see when that gets delivered. But basically, Let's, let's, I just want to go back to the basics. I want everyone to be clear on the use case of single sign-on. I want everyone to understand why we're doing this, what the benefit is to you, and things like that. So if we have a clear understanding, we can go through it. So this is an authentication service. It's an authentication service of the vSphere environment. This is what we're building. Uh, primarily today, we obviously start and set up with vCenter, and that's where it is, but the expansion is going to go way beyond that. But today, look at it no different. You know, you may have a single sign-on solution in the environment. We're not replacing that. We're not going to be using that to replace this either, as much as many people would like to do that. We're actually, you know, providing a, a security domain that we will allow users to be either created or trusted from an external entity to be available to the vSphere environment, where they can then be assigned permissions and roles at the solution level. Okay, that's what it is. It is a component of vCenter today. Don't treat it as any separate. Don't, you know, we talk about availability in a second. You don't need to go out of your way to make this 5.9s available. If this is up and running and vCenter's down, this is doing nothing else. Okay, so whatever your requirements are for vCenter, which we'll, we'll get to in a second on what our options are, you want to be out, that, that will suffice your requirements for using SSO. So the idea is we create this authentication domain. Those of you on 5.1, have it drilled into your head, admin at system-domain. System-domain is the name of the security that, uh, domain that we created in 5.1. We have changed that, because you like change. And we've now put it into vSphere.local, so we're actually FQDN compliant. And we're actually going to use the account administrator at vSphere.local to set the environment up. But ideally, you set yourself up as an administrator and you have full reign to the kingdom. You no longer log into VC. You use the desktop client. You ask for an IP address or host name, username and password. That still uh, is functioning with the desktop client today. Uh, but we're obviously, as you're aware, we're trying to get rid of the, the desktop client. But a VC will then authenticate you against SSO. So using the desktop client, you still are using SSO. Uh, but ideally, you're using the web client. You're going to provide a username and password. You're authenticated to the security domain. Any resources that you have permission to in that domain, you have available to you without being prompted for another logon screen. So you can go from VC to VC or to various plugins, various components within the environment. And we'll see what the, what's there in a second. But you get a SAML2 token given back to you on successful authentication that's put into your user session. The user session is what allows you to go with the keys to go to all the solutions that you've been given permission to. Now in 5.1, we really stress that uh, it is the first component that you touch but we really want you to design and plan this out effectively. 
This still kind of holds true, but don't need to sweat it like you did with 5.1. With 5.1, we had all of these install options. We had all of these, you know, to distribute it. Do I rein it all back into one? How do I, how do I handle that? We didn't give you guidance, things like that. So there was a lot, of, a lot of complexity, and I had to design, had to think about it. I couldn't just run EXE. I had to think about what I was doing before I could deploy my 5.1 upgrade. So with the 5.5, that's still tr true. It's the first product to touch. But I have the ability now, you'll see in a second how we've simplified that whole process, made it much easier for you. So these are the solutions that register themselves with a single sign-on today, or if you use them. Uh, we've, they're mainly vCenter components. We have uh, VCO, we have Log Browser, which is a real nice uh, plugin. And uh, it's used for troubleshooting. You know, any of you that take the logs, put them into Notepad++ and do your random searches, checks, things like that, you will... Uh, you know, we can now use this plugin that's part of the web client to provide that functionality. And you're already authenticated because it interacts with SSO. We also have VCD. VCD uh, is in two, sec two sides. You have a provider side, which means it's the clustered resources available, the underlying uh, hardware, basically. And then you have on the, uh, um, the consumer side, where you create and publish your solutions, and you... Uh, 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 have access, your customers, your, your internal employees have access to that. That does not use SSO. Only the provider side of VCD uses SSO. The underlying resources, uh, the hardware, the cluster, the VC, things like that, okay? But the idea is we want to expand on this. We want our other solutions to, to fall into this. Things like VCOps, Site Recovery Manager, all of this, you know, we want to incorporate that authentication service. And so as those products go through major updates, they will be applied to this principle and use this. But the key area, the, the driver around this is, and you know, I'm obviously in technical marketing and i very candid when I talk about uh, uh, items. The long-term goal of this you know, we talk a lot about cloud, the, the hybrid cloud services that we've released and are expanding through Europe next year. What if you can take or go to a service like that, rent, you know, 10 virtual machines, 100 virtual machines, however many you need, but use your own authentication to access and monitor and manage those environments, not depend on, on the provider's side. This is the long-term goal of where SSO is going to take us and things like that. So there is a huge potential with this. But at the same time, it simplifies, simplifies your environment because we're bringing all of your interfaces into one being the web client, and I can use the authentication without having to be prompted for log on after log on after log on, et cetera. So just a quick overview of the process. This is a repeat from uh, any other slide that you may have seen since 5.1. We've got a web client, we log in, it sends it all the information to single sign-on. Single sign-on then takes that and goes and approves it with Active Directory. I have Open LDAP. I can even have a directory. We, 5.5, we have a directory now in SSO, and I can create users, as well as attach local OS, and we'll talk about that in a second. Get my token, boom, then I have access to all of these as they are registered, as I have permission. So there we should have... Uh, just a brief understanding of what SSO is, what, what it's meant to do, not anything more than that, okay? That's as simple as it gets. Okay, we're not replacing any single sign-on solution that's in the company. Uh, that still will remain and still be utilized. This is purely for vSphere. Let's just break this out. So we obviously have the ability to have multiple uh, uh, vCenters uh, presented uh, through the use of authentication. This is how it would look. If I have re uh, remote sites, I would obviously use something like linked mode to provide this, this functionality. There are w ways to do this without uh, that for a single site that had, may have multiple vCenter servers. And obviously linked mode provides sharing of permissions, sharing of roles, and uh, licensing. But what were the problems? You guys already know what the problems were because you were handling them head first, okay? Active Directory, it sucked. We're using an LDAP connection to talk to a modern directory service. LDAP is only as, um, intelligent enough to understand a single domain. There were ways to make it uh, go beyond that, but most of you have multiple domains. Most of you have separate entities, separate forests, or things like that. You may have one-way trust, two-way trust put in place. We, we could, didn't have that functionality, and we heard you loud and clear. If I have large environments, you know, hundreds of thousands of objects, it was very... Uh, you could do the same search twice and get different results from your Active Directory when you're looking for users and permissions and things like that. So it's very problematic. It wasn't repeatable. Then one of the, the biggest ones here was SSL. We've had SSL in our products from day one. 
we've done a very bad job of using them. And 5.1 actually highlighted that to the front to say, hey, we're supposed to be trusting these communications or having these trusted communications based on SSL, but you've got, you, you, we haven't set it up properly. You know? And if you were, of the few customers, I, I, I do say few because we, we estimated in the, in the early days between 1% and 3% of our customer base would actually be required to change the certificates in the environment. And it was pretty easy in, in the Forex and 5.0 days. We didn't do any job of managing that. But 5.1 obviously highlighted that, and it was very difficult when we had all of these additional components. You need seven certificates for a single vCenter environment to get everything set up and configured, et cetera, which is quite, quite cumbersome. So that's another area. Installation. We told you to distribute it, then we told you not to distribute it. We told you to do HA, we told you not to do HA. We had multi-site, we had basic, we had primary. You know, what do I use? Or what, it, was, it was a learning curve. And so I have this picture of maze because it was literally every, every aisle you went down, you ended up banging your head against the wall. And so the installation needed to be optimized or simplified. And then diagnostics, when things went wrong, we had unfriendly error messages. The logs didn't give us any extra information. So these are the, this is what we heard loud and clear from the 5.1 release. And we've worked with you know, um, the 5.1, as I said, update 1B is the current GA version. There will be an update 2 coming very soon. But it is, it is relatively stable, and there is information out there now. We have a deployment guide for single sign-on in 5.1, and we have, you know, there's lots of blogs and things like that that share that information too. But if we were to tackle that head on, you know, hopefully we could restore some confidence in VMware and get you guys uh, excited again. And so what we did with single sign-on, we did a rip and replace. As I said, we've written this from the ground up, started it off. We have a security token exchange that we wrote ourselves. We have an LDAP directory, a lightweight directory, uh, ourselves built into this system. And so the new architecture allows us to have a multi-master. That means there is no primary and slave. There is no peer. Every peer is the equivalent of, it, of, its, of its other peer. Each one has all the information, the master, master uh, model. Because of its, uh, the information is stored in an LDAP, we are able to utilize LDAP replication to make those changes populate across all instances. And so the idea, as you can see in the graphic, no matter what size of environment you have, whether it's a 1VC or 100VC environment, we want you to have a single vSphere.local, a single security domain for a single pane of management. Now, you can separate them and isolate them with roles and permissions, obviously, is the preferred way to do that. But you could actually deploy this where each one is its own vSphere.local. But it becomes very challenging from an administration and management perspective. And so the idea is if you create this domain, you add any additional servers into that, and we'll go through that in a bit more detail. The database, well, you're going to love this. We had SQL Server or Oracle, but in the most use case, SQL Server for a very small database. It was about 21 megs in size. And we're doing security with security token and SAML2 token exchanges. And we use the simplest version of authentication on the database side, the easiest version to compromise. And that really doesn't fall into an authentication service. And so we've actually, with the database, as you know, we got rid of the database completely. There is no database for single sign-on in 5.5. It is all the configuration, all the users, the groups, and uh, uh, solution users, information like that is all stored in the embedded LDAP directory contained inside SSO itself. The installation, this is something I worked a lot on trying to give feedback and, and simplify. We have one install model now. There is no notion of primary, basic, multi-site, and uh, SSO HA. We've got rid of all of that. Those technologies we'll talk about in a second on, on what happens for the 5.1 if I upgrade, but as they're still there, but we really, you know, there's better ways of using that and we'll see how that is. But the only option you have, and if we've got the right deck now, I'll let, you'll actually see a video of this in a second, but you get asked one question, is this my first one? Am I upgrading or installing my first single sign-on to set up and create that vSphere.local? Or am I adding additional single sign-on service for additional vCenters to be put into that same security and extend that security domain? That's the only question you get asked now. Okay? And then once you're installed, you are master master. You're the same as that first one. There is no, no other uh, uh, options at that point. And then diagnostics. We give you a full suite of MMC tools. We want you to do the day-to-day -day administration, identity sources, which is pretty much a one-time set it and forget it, uh, single sign-on users, single sign-on groups, policies, things like that. If you use the single sign-on environment, the embedded directory, 
you will use the web client. But if you go into more advanced configurations, then these tools will allow you to do that. I have a customer that has over 160 vCenters. If I have 160 SSO servers, as we get to the reference architecture, we'll see how that flows. That's going to be a lot of communication going, especially uh, between those SSO instances. And so we want to be able to further reduce that and maybe define bridgehead type servers at each site to do the replication across the WAN link with redundancy and have everything local off of that. So we have the ability using these tools to go in and, and, and reconfigure replication sets and partners. We can look at the certificates and things like that as well. And we should see that as well in a second. The first thing we have is some prereqs though. We are doing Kerberos authentication. LDAP was a bit uh, easier to work with, uh, but when Kerberos, the first thing that breaks Kerberos is your DNS environment. If you don't have DNS baked, then we will have uh, issues here. We do a little summary, we do a little check of the environment as we go through the installer, and you will see this in a second. Now, what if I'm an open LDAP customer and I don't have my machine joined to a domain? Yes, you will see a red X here, but this is just a summary. It will allow you to proceed. This is doing a check. We know 99.9% .9 of our customers are using Active Directory. I am aware of, of several customers uh, here at the show this week and the multiple customers in the US that do use Open LDAP, and we have the ability to do that. But we know for the main, main source, most of us are using Active Directory. What we got next? So we have the simple installer. Anyone that came to the, the, the deep dive, we've got an explanation on this. We've done a full reverse. The distributed model of all the VC components is uh, something that's desirable, but it adds complexity, it adds overhead from a management perspective. One app over four or five virtual machines adds challenges, not just from an operational perspective, but from an availability perspective. There's dependencies on those solutions. How do I make it really resilient and available and things like that? And so we've done a full reversal. These services, things like single sign-on, things like uh, web client, they don't use or require a lot of CPU or RAM. So running them all locally uh, is, is preferred now, and we really want you to engineer your 5.5 upgrades to run them slowly. We still support a distributed model. You can still go that route. Uh, if you were, any of you were in the uh, performance uh, vCenter session that we had, you'll understand a bit more on what the communications are going on, what helps the, the performance of vCenter go. And latency is, is the biggest issue that, that can be a factor on vCenter performance. And so keeping everything local uh, is, is, is a, a good option. The problem with the simple installer, though, is it's des it is designed to take the defaults of all of vCenter uh, the components with the defaults on a single machine with limited options. That means everyone's got to install the vCenter into the C drive for C program files, and that's not something that we all do. So we also have the individual installers, which you're typically going to be using, you're typically going to be using for, for your upgrades for your installations because you get more options available to you, things like the destination. If I want to distribute them, I would obviously use the individual installers just to run that one component. But also, the simple installer does not, when it runs SSO, does not allow you to choose, is this my first SSO or app, or am I adding to a previous one? And what that means is everyone's going to end up with, with this duplication of SSO. It's something that we have fixed. Uh, it should be out in the first patch release. We do typically do a, a patch release within 90 days of GA, and this change has been affected. But if you're with the, the, the code today, Simple Installer will not allow you to add your, your SSO instance to a previous uh, security domain at that point. And then the installation is, is basically these nine steps. But before I show you, I'm going to show you the installation in its entirety in a second. But for, for those that are on 5.1 and have that admin at system dash domain drilled into your head, we have aliased it. You will set up the administrator at vSphere.local. The password you set for that will be the same password for admin at system dash domain when you do an upgrade. So it's late at night, for whatever reason something's gone wrong, it's drilled in your head, you've been using admin at system dash domain for the longest use, you will still be able to log in as that user. Okay? But ideally, we don't want you to use either of those accounts, we want you to be using your Active Directory account. With SSO in 5.1, we kind of separated SSO from VC. <laughs> We've kind of brought them back together. When you set up a uh, uh, single sign-on, this user becomes a VI admin, so you will be able to log in and see your information. We would want you to set yourself up as a VI admin and an SSO admin so that you have that same functionality if you're administrating the environment. And 
you know, those of you that had 5-1, we played that trick with you. Hey, give me a password. I'll put it into an account. And then I'll put it into a hidden account that you don't know about. But we're going to ask you for that at a later time. And it's called the master account, which is uh, took that original password. You can only change that password. This is 5-1 I'm talking now. Only change that password if you had the previous password. Otherwise, it was literally a uninstalled and reinstalled, which is pretty bad, right? We got rid of all of that. If you were an admin on SSO, you have full reigns to the kingdom in SSO land. Okay, you can use your account for every function that you use that, that you will need it for. You do not have any of these hidden accounts anymore. Okay. So we're going to go into, uh, let me see if, yeah, we go. So this is the installer. We click next, come up, we accept the license. We all read that, obviously. Here's our check. Click next. Here's the only screen that we have options. This is it, the first SSO or additional SSOs. The third option is if I want to define a separate site. I give it a password, give it a site name. This is just, uh, as I said, uh, for, uh, it's more of a general grouping today. Here's a summary, and then I install all the components. That's SSO installed in 5.5. This is a lot better than it was in 5.1, right? It's a huge change. Obviously, I've sped this up a bit. It's not quite this fast, but. <laughs> and it just goes through, and then we get a finished screen, and, that, and that, that's it. So we see all the components. There are multiple components, like Kerberos being installed, MIT being installed, things like that, and we get this finished screen. But obviously, you, those that have spent the hours, the late nights, getting 5.1 set up and running, you know, you've gone through the pain, you've got these configurations, you're like, I'm not touching SSO ever again. You can do an in-place upgrade and keep those configurations. So you can keep the basic mode, you can keep SSO HA, you can keep multi-site. But this architecture is so much better than that, it's, there's easier ways to use that. We really want to highlight that with this uh, uh, new release. Obviously, we've talked about the distribution, the, the complexity, things like that. We want to reduce that. We want vCenter to be simple. And the reason we want it to be simple is because you shouldn't have to maintain vCenter. You should be doing your environment uh, uh, data center administration, not vCenter administration. vCenter should just be working for you. And we really want to get back to those days. So obviously, you know, where do we, how do we want you to get to? You know, we want to, uh, you know, one thing that you guys complained a lot about was we didn't have, and I'm not saying you guys are complainers, I'm just saying there was lack of guidance out there. And we gave you all of these options, but you just wanted to be, how do you want me to use this? How do you want me to configure this? And so this, this year, we've kind of tackled it. It's a very simple thing to do. If you're in a 4.0 or 5.0 environment, this is no change for you. This is exactly what you're familiar with. So you don't have to go through some of those changes. You can run, if sized appropriately, you can run this all the way up to 1,000 hosts, 10,000 VMs. And I did have a customer in the deep dive that said they were running that side per scale. You can do that. Obviously, the database, we still typically see that separate. Obviously, for best performance, you would put that locally, but then you're really asking for a monster VM to be up to, to run vCenter, and I wouldn't recommend that myself. But you could run this a, a database server in a separate VM and run affinity rules to make sure they stay on the same host together and things like that to maintain that latency as well from a performance aspect. But this will support max scale. What if I have multiple vCenters, maybe in the same location, maybe in remote locations? Well, we still want you to stick to the single model approach. We want to extend that security domain. And we will have, in the same security domain, we will have everything replicated in terms of SSO configuration. That will all automatically be handled on the back end. Nothing for you to set up, nothing for you to configure. I'll show you the ports in a minute of what's used for that replication. Uh, but we have all of this built in. This is how we want you to use it. If you have linked mode in the environment, this is, you absolutely have to use this, OK? Because linked mode is sending one set of credentials to talk to multiple VCs. It's got a token from the SSO server. And that's got to be able to be uh, uh, authenticated by any one of those uh, SSO instances in that security domain. So for linked mode, you absolutely have to do this. And I still recommend doing this without linked mode because this gives you one point for administration across your whole SSO environment for vSphere. Otherwise, you're going to have, as we talked about, duplications with the, the same name. Each one could potentially be vSphere.local, but each one would have its own STS, so you're dishing out different tokens or tokens that another STS will not accept. And therefore, you will get no replication at all. But what if I'm a large customer? You know, I said my customer has 160 plus vCenters, 
And uh, honestly, he, uh, he doesn't know the actual number. He just knows of 160 in the environment, but he has more than that. But, uh, you know, let's help reduce some of that replication. I don't want them to run 160 SSO instances. In that type of environment, you really want to get down to where you have one or two SSO instances per site that all the local resources can authenticate with and part of the same security domain at that point. So what we can do if we have, uh, it says six here, we've been bouncing around various numbers. Ideally, we want to stay in the peer-to-peer -peer type of model with the multi-master SSO, which fulfills 99% of our customer base, but we do have some very large customers where this does make sense to offload that replication and we do this, but we're, we're the, the, the soft number is, you could actually do this with two, but we're only really recommending it from eight or more in a single physical location to offload SSO to a, a, its own machine. And you, you can throw the web client on there. You need to use the web client for administration of the SSO environment. And then you'll be able to uh, um, you know, have everything point to that SSO. But what happens when SSO goes down? Your VCs will still work to, to somewhat functionality, you've lost all management. So if you do do this model, you absolutely have to have availability because you won't be able to log in. You will not be able to use the desktop client to connect to, to the vCenter because it needs SSO to authenticate you. So you absolutely have to do that and obviously vSphere HA is one option, reboots the, the machine. We are working on doing some, some uh, uh, work with the AppHA team to do some vCenter monitoring. Uh, which you'll hear when, when that's available, we'll, I'll, I'll share that with everyone. We have vCenter Heartbeat, so if it's physical or virtual, it provides redundancy and, uh, and uh, some monitoring. Or you can put uh, multiple instances behind a load balancer. This is now active-active, and so uh, I can just set up a load balancer with multiple instances to provide that level of redundancy. We're handling the replication on the back end. But we can mix and match as our environments grow or as we upgrade, we can add you know, multiple vCenters, we can have the, the various configurations. All of this will be part of the same security domain. This is how we want you to deploy single sign-on throughout your environment. You can do isolation through roles and permissions on the, on the VC side or on the various other solutions, uh, but it's a lot easier to maintain this model with a single administration point than to have multiple duplicate uh, administrations. That's where it gets really complex and confusing. Uh, one side note, uh, there was a change between this slide in San Francisco and here. I'm a huge fan of the vCenter appliance. It makes sense, it's really easy to deploy. It has the same SSO code in the appliance. However, we're only able to set it up as the one and only uh, um, single sign-on domain. We can create a security domain with the, the single sign-on, but we cannot do any replication in the appliance today. The technology's there. We've just capped some of the capability, which I am full steam ahead pushing to, to get um, added to, to the product. Uh, but then you'll be able to, the, the second, uh, uh, vCenter in the, in the middle picture there was actually a vCenter appliance in the original uh, drawing of this, but we are working on, on fixing that uh, because we want you to adopt the appliance for many reasons. That's a different discussion, um, but we've got to get you to be able to use it before you can do that. So. so what is an identity source? Well, we've talked about what SSO is. SSO provides a directory of users and can create groups to find policies. So within itself, it is a directory itself, but an identity source is basically trusting an external entity. You know, we've talked about Active Directory. That's pretty much what everyone's using. When you're using 5.1, you're using option number two, an LDAP connection. LDAP is basically saying, go to this domain controller, authenticate Justin with this password. It's not saying go and find, that, find this account and authenticate him. It's just saying, do you have this account, yes or no? And that's why it was limited to a single domain. When you do an upgrade from 5.1 to 5.5, it will move your configuration from LDAP to native Active Directory. What does that mean? It means I am now an Active Directory object working in the environment to do the authentication, which allows Microsoft in an Active Directory environment to do the work for you. We just basically say, here's, here's my card with my username and password. Do whatever you have to do, but come back and just say yes or no. Go across trust, go across domains, do whatever you need to work with that type of environment. So that's what an identity source is. We also support Open LDAP. We're, we're standard uh, or built the schema on the default Open LDAP schema that's uh, documented, but there are various flavors. So there may be some uh, alter alternative uh, 
uh, issues with connecting to alternative flavors. If there are, please reach out to me and let me know. I'm trying to collect data on this so that we can either provide uh, assistance on customizing that schema to meet those requirements or actually make, make uh, changes in, in the schema for open LDAP. We have local operating system, which is something that we really want to move away from. And the reason being is over the time, we've been kind of dependent on, you know, the, f the thing we used to do was take the local administrators group and give it a VI admin role. When we did that, rather than going into VC and saying, hey, I've got these Active Directory users and groups, I want them to be VI admins, all I did was basically populate them into that local group. And that local group, when the host was authenticating or providing that functionality, it was everything worked. But when single sign-on came into the picture, that's a separate entity from the host itself. And so what will happen is you see a KB, and we talk about it a little bit at the end with some of the known gotchas, is if you have domain identities in a local group, we need the permissions to be updated to reflect the identity source username or group. So it would be Active Directory you know, username or group, local OS username or group, single sign-on user or group. We don't want the permissions to reflect a local group that contains domain users, uh, domain accounts, because uh, single sign-on is, is, is seeing that it's a local identity source. It can't go beyond that, okay? So it's a little, it, it makes sense to, to do this. We should have done this a long time ago, um, but it's one of those things that carry over from version to version and uh, um, kind of bitten us a little bit with this. It will also impact performance because it's trying to authenticate that user and we'll never find it. And that's really what we're, we're saying here. Okay, we have these tools. Uh, these are MMC tools. As I said, these are for advanced administration. You can do everything SSO related with these tools. Okay, we've got the uh, replication administrator. We've got the single sign on the directory console uh, access here so I can see my users, my groups. I can create and define those from here. Obviously, we want you to do that in the, uh, uh, the web client. We have a, uh, a VMCA. A VMCA is a CA route that we are providing. Uh, it's obviously part of a big plans for the future where we fix SSL. Uh, SSL is relatively the same as the 5.1 update 1B status meaning we still have the same certificate requirements, but we have tools to help you inject them. But we are, we're, we're working on removing all of these trusts from certificate to certificate to certificate and just uh, do it the correct way with SSL, where we trust an entity being the VMware CA root, and all certificates that come from that will then be uh, trusted without us having to do any more explanation or, or, or binding those together. That's something for the future, that's something we're working on. You will be even able to take this and make it a subordinate of maybe your Active Directory CA route or another CA route that you have in the entity. So you can use certificates from, from another CA route at that point. This is all stuff that you're gonna see snippets of information um, come out from, from various people um, that are well versed with SSL. To me, it never used to be this difficult, but uh, it has been challenging with the 5.1 but we will be releasing information on how to utilize some of that information, uh, but it's all in preparation for the next big release with vCenter where we will have full management of your SSL. That's not today, obviously, we've given you some tidbits into the future and some eyes on the environment. You can go into the VMCA, you can go into the certificate configuration through the console tools, see the certificates in there, you can add them, remove them. It will not generate the CSR, so you won't trust the component from this, but you have a level of visibility to look at the attributes and things like that of those certificates in the environment. We obviously have the VM directory as well, which is the LDAP directory. These are separate download. I'm trying to get them on the public side because these tools were designed for people like Josh and Jonathan, who at the time were in support services, and for our engineers to support you when these problems arise. But as you can see, there's a lot of value here for you guys having them yourself. So today, you will have to either reach out to GSS and get them a copy of those tools to you. I'm gonna try and find a way to uh, legally get them available to you as well um, until I can get them put on the resource tab of the, uh, the vCenter download page. But this also allows us to do updates, and there's some really cool updates planned for the use of these tools in the future. Uh, and we can do these updates without being tied to a release cycle as well. So we can get them as soon as they're ready out to you. So one of those is obviously the replication. This is a, this is a tr accurate screen, but there was a screen that wasn't ready when I took this screenshot, uh, because this was done a couple of months ago. 
we actually give you a full network map of all your SSO instances in that same security domain, and you can see all the arrows and directions of replication occurring. From there, you can right-click and adjust the, the parameters. You can go in and update the, the replication links, move them around so that they're not all targeting a single machine, or they're, you, know, you, you, you want to define kind of bridge heads across your WAN links for replication, things like that. You can go into the tool and do all of that with this configuration. And so for those very complex environments, any consultants here, and this is going to be very useful for you to help optimize your customer's environment. Same with the certificates. Uh, there was a slide I thought was in here, but it got dropped uh, for some reason. But I showed the same thing with certificates here, where you can go in and see the environment. We do have updated the tool, um, the uh, tool for injecting certificates into the environment. If you have to use your own signed certificates or purchase certificates, uh, unfortunately, it is a tool for 5.1 that we have today. Uh, we also have a tool, the same tool, but for 5.5. They are version specific. So if you do mix and match the environments uh, or, or you, know, you want to use 5.5, you will have to get the updated tool. A little note on that, with the release of this and all the pain that you've gone through using single sign-on in 5.1, we do support, and you will see me uh, uh, message this very soon, we support the use for you 5.1 customers out there of updating to SSO 5.5 with the web client 5.5 and at a later time coming back to do the vCenter. So you can split the versions between the two, which you'll have to be obviously careful for if you're doing SSL because you'll have to use both tools, remember, for that. But we will allow you to upgrade SSO and the web client to get the benefits that we've put in place here and then at a later time. That centralized model in 5.1, you had to update all vCenters at the same time because they're all, for support, everything had to be on the same version. We've now got rid of that, and SSO can be used not as a standalone, but it can be used as a central where we can have multiple versions of VC communicating with it. And we, we obviously support that back to 5.1. Okay. So I'm just going to go quickly through this one. Most of the um, backup, you know, there's two ways of doing backup, which we typically see, disk level backup, where we take the whole VM. Uh, SSO is stateless. So everything's self-contained in that directory, uh, the STS uh, services. So taking the whole VM isn't a problem. VDP's been updated to be able to provide uh, host level restore. When you used VDP in the past, you could back up all your VMs. And then when you wanted to restore, you had to point it to the vCenter to say where you wanted to restore to. Now you have the option with VDP 5.5 to select a host and restore the VM to the host directly, which allows you to use VDP for, five, uh, for vCenter. Uh, there may be some confusion over VDP and VDPA, which is, uh, I, I think it stands for advanced. That's kind of the obvious thing there, but I, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, that's more specific for QSing the data uh, with SQL agents and Oracle agents and things like that. You can do host restore with the, the, the basic uh, VDP. So there's an option, but we do have a KB telling you if you want to do application specific uh, uh, level backups. But at the end of the day, we've got multi-master replication built into the product. What does it mean? If I lose my SSO, I can just rebuild a new one. It's going to get all of the updates at that point. And then I just re-register the components to use that SSO instance, which we have documented KBs providing that. And I'm back in business. You know? So it's not a big deal. You do have to back. I do want you. Don't, don't take this that I'm telling you not to back up SSO. I want you to treat the SSO and vCenter as one and do what you require and absolutely do a daily backup. But it's not the end of the world if you don't have a copy you can restore from. Because of the multi-master, you can recreate that very easily. Okay. Uh, availability, we talked a little bit about here. Obviously, you know, going out of the way to make SSO run uh, highly available and do nothing for vCenter. SSO does nothing if vCenter is down. If, v if SSO is down, vCenter is doing nothing. So whatever you, do, you mandate for vCenter is the right approach to do for SSO. Don't worry with SSO HA. It's, it's, a, it's a workable configuration. It's got better with 5.5. But adding a load balancer into the equation does add another level of complexity. What's your comfort zone with the, with the configuration of networking or the network load balancer, updating certificates, updating registrations, things like that. Uh, it adds an extra level of, of uh, complexity there. So it is still uh, a valuable or supported configuration, but you will actually get the same level, if not more, protection by using the basics like vSphere HA or a product like vCenter Server Heartbeat uh, to protect the SSO server if you need to go that, that manner. 
So um, we always get told, and I apologize, this is a repeat if anyone was in any of the other sessions, but we have the installer logs here, we have the operational logs, but before you take a picture, this is the one that shows you all the authentication requests. So if you can't log in to single sign-on, this log will show you your request being intercepted into SSO. It'll show all the communications going on to Active Directory and being accepted and a token being generated. So you'll be able to follow the whole flow of that logon process and troubleshoot what's going on in this log right here. We have dropped NIS. I've only met a handful of customers that do use NIS uh, for their user repositories. Uh, you used to be able to maintain it if you did an upgrade, but it's gone completely at this point. If it is a problem for anyone, please reach out, let me know. The default uh, um, providers, naming providers, what this means is I can log in without putting my FQDN. I can do Justin instead of Justin at VMware.com. And that's not my email address. But I can now log that. When I had the LDAP connection, I could have many domains uh, attached in the configuration so I could populate multiple default domains. With the new native uh, Active Directory communication, you really don't need that anymore. You would just set that, that configuration as the default domain, and you only need the one. You don't need to put additional default domains if you have multiple domains in the environment, because it will be able to get Active Directory to, to find that for you. Okay? And some uh, configuration alerts. The default password policy for SSO users is 365. Uh, I recommend changing that to a lower number, but at the same time, not too low, because there is a little gotcha here. We don't give you any alerts or warnings of when that password's going to expire, so it could just expire and you're locked out at that point. So it's one of the reasons why, one, we want you to use your own account for SSO administration, and then you either have the administrator account or, or your, your colleagues' accounts that have access to the system to go in and reset that if necessary. This is SSO only. This is not Active Directory. This is just the users that you could define in, in the SSO environment itself that you can have available for permissions. These are the ports that are used by SSO. It is an LDAP, LDAP replication. We're not using the default ports uh, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, vCenter itself, itself is still using those. 11.7.11, 11.7.12 are two uh, are the, the LDAP replication ports. So if I do have to go through firewalls over WAN, WAN links, etc., I will need those opened up. So just as uh, um, you know, software, there are some glitches out there, and as I said, I, I speak openly when I talk about this, and I wanted to, I put this in just this morning because I really want you guys to have a good comfort level with 5.5. I've done an awful lot of work uh, getting it uh, um, to where it is today with a, with a great team to work for, the engineering, etc. But there are a couple of issues that are out there today, but these are minute, these are minor issues that will probably only affect less than 3% of this room, if not less than that. And it's a lot less than what happened with 5.1 because the phone didn't stop ringing with 5.1. This one here is if you're using a 2012 domain controller on a 2012 server, you will not be able to create a native Active Directory connection. And the, there's a KB that documents all the issues, all the details of the, the uh, issue here. And we provide you with a DLL that will, you just switch out in the, uh, the SSO environment and that will allow you to continue as, as is then. So that's issue number one. This is only affect, how many people are running 2012 with 2012 domain services? So we've got, as we see, we've got a couple of uh, hands go up, but it's not gonna affect everyone there, okay? And incidentally, are these, I've got three or four of these. All of these are fixed in the patch release that we're doing. So uh, um, and we have workarounds for everything today. This one here, I'm doing an upgrade, but I get through to the inventory service, and then it stops and starts rolling back. There is no downtime to your environment at this point. The reason this happens is because depending on the version that you're upgrading from, there's a registry key that has a value to say my certificates are based on FQDN or my certificates are based on IP. We obviously want them to be on FQDN, so if it comes from a version that set it to IP, it's gonna hit this issue and the inventory service will not install. It will just revert and roll back to, to, to where you were before you started. You, this KB basically just documents how to change the value on that one registry key so that it accepts FQDN for the certificates generated, and then you just rerun that component and you'll, you'll go through the installer. So we have a workaround. It's a little quirky thing that's really stupid, if you ask me, that's in there. We shouldn't, have been, we shouldn't be changing, but that's a different pay grade uh, to me. But we have a workaround and it's operational, okay? 
This is our environmental more than the solution itself. The other one is a good old one, carryover from 5.1, is we have some uh, illegal characters that we don't like as passwords. These are the characters, uh, which is about half of the list in 5.1, so there are uh, characters we can use. We can use the exclamation point for a character in a password for SSO, but we found an issue if you re-register, you know, you're re-architecting your environment, you're going from distributed to single, you're trying to re-register different SSO instance, re-running the script to do the web client doesn't like exclamation points as a password. It, it kind of balks at that. So try, it will work for SSO administration, but try not to have these characters, and I would be cautionary with the exclamation point as a character in your SSO password, okay? And then uh, this, is, uh, this is a good one. This is a good one from 5.1, actually, but it's still tr true because of what we talked about uh, with the permissions. You go through all the work of upgrading your system, you log in, there's nothing there. No vCenters, no hosts, no clusters, nothing. What the hell? Did it wipe everything? I'm, I'm getting pretty frantic right now. All this is saying, basically, if you come into this scenario, this KB is saying, is in 5.1, we kind of kept SSO separate from the, uh, the, the VI admins role or the vCenter itself from a permissions based. And what has happened is that administrator at vSphere.local um, isn't uh, have access to the vCenter environment or your user account doesn't have permission to that vCenter. So you need to go in and uh, just correct those permissions. Nine times out of 10, it's because you're using a local group with a domain user and it can't route that through for, for authentication at that point. And so you want to, uh, that's why we need to have permissions based on the identity source, user group, uh, et cetera. So that's, this is kind of more of an operational one. This is really a best practice uh, comment here on, on how to use it in general. And it should have been around a lot, a lot more. And that's really uh, kind of the end of, of the session. Um, we've got uh, about 10 minutes left for questions. And I've got Josh and Jonathan around. Um, we are still obviously early. I've done a lot of work getting SSO um, to a usable state. It's been phenomenal, the amount of feedback we've had. Everyone just really likes to turn around what we've done here. I do want you to, to get hold of it, play with it, use it, put it in your environment. It is much better than last year. You will not go through the same experiences as last year. And I want to appreciate uh, for all of you staying to the last session of the day. Um, so let's, let's take uh, any questions, any hands. We've got one at the back here and one at the back over here. So whoever's first. <laughs> Hello. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, is SSO 5.5 certified for all the surrounding solutions, such as Vue, et cetera? That's, that's a great question. So we're working on that. That obviously makes sense from our perspective. We're not there today. As those solutions go through major upgrades, they will be integrated. But we also don't get confused like Vue is using Horizon. Horizon provides its own single sign-on. That's kind of a level three uh, for solution-based access on the end user side, the consumer side. Uh, SSO with vCenter is more on the infrastructure side, so they won't be joining. You won't see the VI web client appearing in Horizon. It's possible to do that and configure it yourself, but they will be using different single sign-on solutions. But the idea is obviously to get things like Site Recovery Manager, VC Ops, and other solutions like that. VCAC will be using SSO as well with the new update that comes out in a few months. So, um, so the plan is to get everything onto it. All right. Over here. Uh, yeah, we, we use Active Directory trusts for our users. And since there was no Active Directory support in 5.1, we had to add them under groups, under system dash domain. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we migrate to 5.5 most easily? So it's, it's pretty uh, straightforward. The, the question is I had to create all these groups for the various domains I have in my environment through the various trusts to be able to get them into SSO. So SSO can then give those users permissions within the environment. How do I handle that with an upgrade? Well, if you do an in-place upgrade, then it's going to take all of that, uh, those groups, and convert them. Uh, it's going to alias every user account or every group that you have in the environment, so that will be maintained, but it will be an alias of the vSphere.local. So you, in, an in-place upgrade, everything will work fine. If you wanted to re-architect and move it back to a single virtual machine, as we're recommending, do the upgrade, and then install a single sign-on local to the vCenter that you're going to move it to. 
That's going to be a, a, a instance within that security domain. It will replicate all of that information to that node. As you update this VC, you'll use the local SSO and not the remote SSO at that point. So you'll be able to you know, re-architect the environment as well without losing any of that. But ideally, uh, with the native Active Directory connections being a machine object or an SPN within the environment, Ideally, you'd want to go into the VC uh, permissions and update them to, it will still work with how you have it today in 5.5 and it will work just as well or if not better. But ideally, from, from a clean administration perspective, you'd want to update them so they either, you know, using the group is fine, but you may want to change it to groups of your remote uh, domains that are trusted. Okay, and it works with one-way trust, it works with two-way trust um, uh, as well. So. Anything else? One question at the front here. Um, if we uh, migrate to the vCenter 5.1, mm -hmm. will it be possible to use the SSO 5.5? So the question is, if I go, to, uh, so you're obviously on 5.0 or prior, prior, and I want to go to 5.1 for whatever reason, but can I use SSO from 5.5? You can do that. Uh, the big changes with 5.5 over 5.1 are SSO and the web client, and so you'll need to use the web client in 5.5 to administer the SSO 5.5. So you need to do both components, but you could, if you wanted to, move to 5.1 on the inventory service side and the vCenter side. Um, we fully support that and you can do that. I, my only question would be why would we stay at 5.1 um, with the benefits of obviously keeping everything on the same version number is, is uh, you know, the minor improvements, the software fixes that we've done uh, going from 5.1 to 5.5, it is minimal, but it's probably the best time to do it as well, you know? Yeah, okay. Okay, but it is a supported configuration, yes. Good question. Good question. Anything else? Question at the front here. It's just to clarify about the, um, the requirement for linked mode yeah. and having yeah. a single pane of glass view, mm -hmm. is that strictly for multiple sites or what happens within an, an individual site? So the, the question is uh, the use case for linked mode. Uh, the linked mode is what we recommend <laughs> for a single pane of glass view, meaning I log into one web client and I get to see all my vCenters that are distributed across multiple sites. That's the, the, the first use case of linked mode. If I'm in a single location and I want to have a single pane of glass, that is the preferred way to do that. But if I have multiple vCenter servers, obviously the example we're talking about is eight, but it's a soft number. You could do it with two or more if necessary. If you offload and centralize SSO, every VC that's registered to the same SSO instance will appear in the web client for you to administer and search across. So you get linked mode. Uh, I call it poor man's linked mode because linked mode also replicates licensing roles and the permissions of those roles where you don't get any of that with this. You basically just get a, a direct visibility to those VCs from a single client. But that's only local to that one instance. You do not want to authenticate with SSO across a WAN link. So it would only be to the site boundaries that you put that in. So you do get that kind of level, but the recommended approach today is still to use linked mode, which is uh, factored to a maximum of 10 connected vCenters. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I will be around if there's uh, any more questions. I'll, I'll take those in a second. But uh, thank you for staying. Please fill in the surveys. Let us help you uh, get better sessions as we go forward. Um, I apologize for anyone that's been following me around with all the vCenter sessions. There has been some overlap. But hopefully this, that you got some benefit out of this as well on how to use SSO. And uh, um, so, so thank you again. Thank you.